So much love and appreciation to those of you who have been with me for the two year period plus that I've been doing this. Um, thank you for showing your uh, love and support to the channel and to anybody else who is brand new to the platform and you would like to support the channel. Also, you can do it by way of Patreon, Anchor, the clothing store, and also the shoe shop that is listed in the comment description below. And again, thank you to any and all of you guys who have been here to support this channel during the two plus year period. I wouldn't be able to do what I do every single day without you. A single mother of two was shot after her offender ex-boyfriend who had stalked her, threatened and harassed her for almost two years. Bao Yang, age 39, was ambushed outside of her home by Dao Por Lao, age 39, who then took his own life. Lao killed his former partner just 19 days after he was released from custody and just weeks after Yang had sought a protection order from the courts. He allegedly warned her to, quote, drop the charges against him less than a month before the murder. Away from the abusive and obsessive Lao after their relationship ended back in 2019, and the police were called to their home 14 times in eight months, but he continued to stalk her. The terrified woman had accused him of the R word, assault, harassment, and forcefully shaving her head. Police found Miss Yang and Lao suffering from wounds in her front garden at about 8.30 a.m. on Saturday. A shotgun and a handgun were found at the scene. Miss Yang is survived by her two sons aged 11 and 21. Police were called to Mrs. Yang's home 14 times in the last eight months following her repeated complaints about Lao. The 15th call to her home was her death. A police spokesperson stated officers immediately secured the scene and began to render aid. They called for St. Paul Fire Paramedics, who arrived a short time later and pronounced the man dead at the scene. The female victim was transported to the hospital but did not survive her injuries. She was pronounced dead at the hospital. After the alleged R word, Miss Yang decided not to pursue charge because, quote, Lao continued to harass her and she believed pursuing the case would make things worse for her. Living in fear, Miss Yang had moved to a new home, but Lao found her. In February, she sought protection order for her family, claiming that Lao had made threats of extortion and harm and sent new photos of her to her ex-husband. She wrote in a court petition, quote, I got scared of what he would do. He has expressed to me verbally and through text messages that he wouldn't stop and is not afraid of authorities. Miss Yang reopened the case against Lau a month ago. Police were investigating him for allegedly sending new photos. Lau was arrested on suspicion of criminal sexual conduct and non-consensual dissemination of private sexual images and was released on bail March 1st. Miss Yang continued to report harassment in the months before she was killed. Just days before Lau was released on bail, he allegedly called Miss Yang's home and said, drop the charges before he hung up. Lau was a level three offender, a the highest risk to the public. When Lau moved to St. Paul in November last year, a police noticed two neighbors stated that he had held a teenage girl against her will, manipulated her through alcohol and physical force, and engaged in contact with her. He served time in prison and was freed in 2014. In 2003, he was convicted of second degree assault of a minor and was in court for domestic abuse in 2011. Now, the image that you see above is of a different story that I did where you have a, another Asian man who basically stated that he went through uh, the whole ordeal because he was raised right if he said that he was going to do something he was going to see it all the way through so if he said that he was going to take the life of somebody that he loves he was going to see it all the way through because that is the way culturally he was raised so yet again this is why you continuously will see these events transpire and unfold and this is why you won't hear a sound from the asian community when things like this take place you're not going to see them create hashtags they're not going to march to bring awareness of what's going on in their community they're not going to bring this up on social media or in front of the news to make the others aware because all of them culturally are fully aware of everything that is going on culturally because this is how they are 
raised. Like I said before, I'm not making this up. This is clearly what one Asian man basically stated of how he was raised. And you can clearly see what took place here. Now, my other main concern is this. I've told you guys many a times on this uh, platform about offenders and how it is that law enforcement seems to not care, right? He was a level three. He was of the highest risk to the public. It was stated what he did back in 2003 uh, to a young minor at that time. And, you know, in a sense that some of the things that she had to basically go with, but yet he was still out here. Now, my main thing is that did the mother do any type of background directly on him like what like what what exactly is going on when you have a lot of these women going out here and they're dating or engaged or boyfriend or girlfriend or they're married to these guys who are offenders like i said the registry is 100 open you can go up there and dial in somebody's name or maybe you might be able to go to the police station i'm not sure and, and look up a person's name to see if they have any type of records you can do background checks and i'm not understanding why it is that more women instead of spending money on hair nails makeup designer clothes designer shoes uh the next best car and all this other type of stuff why is it that women are willing to spend thousands of dollars on trash versus thousands of dollars on things that could potentially make sure that they are as safe as possible and that they have as much information right that they can have on a person that they plan on potentially dating or seeing themselves with in the future like i said i'm i'm highly baffled and then you have this person around your child you have to be kidding me you have to be kidding me like that that is crazy there is no logical reason for any of that to take place and this is when i state what i've stated before that a lot of times when things happen to children it is by way of the woman who is dating a man because she doesn't know his history she doesn't know his past she has not done a background check she is not checked in with uh the family or ex-girlfriends or whatever it is to basically see the type of person and man that he is or if the portrayal that he is giving off to her is indeed a factual and a real one versus a facade and obviously if if i am to assume i'm going to hopefully assume correct that he gave off a facade of some type of good well-meaning guy but realistically he was demonic in nature but this is what happens when you have too many women that have a naivete when it comes to uh dating potential and dating prospects they look for all of this physical stuff but they don't try to search and look for the stuff that is internal the stuff that actually matters the stuff that you're going to see over the years the stuff that's going to have a long-term effect over the years not just on you but also on your family and your friends you know dealing with a potentiality that he might do something like this but like i said before i wanted to sit up there and put the story directly up there because this is a story i didn't sit up there and hear about back in uh what what was it 2021 i didn't hear anything about this didn't hear not a peep about it at all when i looked through social media about all the things that's going on this was not a story that was up there this was not a story that was highlighted and like i stated before all of the people that want to support the asian community and be there for the asian community where are they to speak out on things like this when you have asian people taking the lives of other asian people oh that's right they don't exactly care so within that you can basically sense that they 100 don't care about asian people the only time that they happen want they happen to want to bring up or talk about asian lives mattering and stuff being a hate crime is when it delves into somebody being black that's the only time anybody actually cares about another person's life and i'm just going to be real i've been doing stories for so many years now for about what four four plus almost touching on five maybe and this is what i always see people want to buck up and they want to be brave on social media they want to act like they're a social justice warrior they want to do this and they want to do that only when it's somebody black on the negative spectrum dealing with the story but when it's white on white when it's asian on asian 
when it's Arab on Arab, when it's European on European, when it's so on and so on and so on, nobody has really anything to say. And I've covered a multitude of stories throughout my time on YouTube. And that has clearly showcased and proven the point of everything that I've been saying at the end of the day. People only care about the loss of life when it's at the hands of somebody black doing it. If we have at this moment in time, right, a black president that decided to sit up there and massively take the lives of American citizens, everybody would sit up there and lose their minds and they would be looking at the black community in a negative light. But when you have a Caucasian president that in a sense is doing the exact same thing by way of war, nobody has nothing to say. People are like, well, you know, that's that it is what it is patriotic you gotta you know fight for our rights we gotta defend the free world and all this other great stuff right but yet you allow these individuals to sit up there and put your sons and your daughters directly up there for the slaughter and you get nothing up there for return but what a few medals a flag that's it and, and, and maybe they might play a little bit of music there. That's it. But realistically, the government does not care at all because their whole main goal is to raise soldiers. Their whole main goal is to sit up there and sacrifice all of your kids so that they can gain a profit. They're going to gain a profit because, of course, they have their hands directly uh, dealing with the hospitals, dealing with the morgues, dealing with the embalming and caskets and all these other types of things. And then they're going to make a profit because they're also giving your kids the armaments and the bullets and all of the stuff that they need to basically go directly over there. And then on top of that, they're gaining more profit because they're turning a whole nother place or a whole nother country into a democracy or whatever it is just so that they can easily get their hands on all different types of resources and basically strip that land and those people of any type of power rights and money that they basically have all for freedom right 